The subject is erotic art, and the senior is Naomi Wilzig, the founder of the World Erotic Art Museum, located in Miami, Florida. As she sees it, erotic art is as deserving of appreciation as any other kind of art. And if anyone should have the maturity and perspective to appreciate it, it's seniors. So hang on. She's about to take us on a tour of her adult-only museum. Miami, Florida's South Beach has long been a hot spot in the world of visual art and the world of tourism. It was already sizzling back in the 1920s and 30s when people flocked here to stay in its elegant seaside Art Deco hotels. Recently, the temperature went up a few more notches with the opening of Weem, the World Erotic Art Museum. On display is a head-turning collection of erotic paintings, sculptures, figurines, fertility symbols, and other art objects from all over the globe, dating from ancient to modern times. Just as startling to some visitors is the force behind this risque venture. A 70-something entrepreneur, author, and grandmother named Naomi Wilzig, better known simply as Miss Naomi. You are about to enter the world of erotica. There's an essential difference uh, between erotic art and pornography in that pornography has the message, just let's have sex. Erotic art is art, and you see the artist's talent. He's, uh, he's trying to deliver, he or she is trying to deliver a message. Uh, you get involved in it on, a, on an emotional level, a psychological level of looking at the talent of the artist, the beauty of the work, what did it mean, what was the artist trying to tell us. As you look from left to right, you'll see contemporary art. The new museum was many years in the making. As Miss Naomi discovered, not everyone shared her passion for putting erotic art on display. You would be surprised at how many locations in different cities, major cities throughout the country, refused to let me open the museum before I came to Miami because they didn't want a, an erotic art museum in their, the confines of their town. Forget about old people not accepting sexuality or the word. Even your um, mid, midlife society hasn't grown up uh, and, and matured enough to accept the words erotic art and sex and sexuality. So this museum is, is like a learning experience for the world. Here for all to see are some of the finest works collected by Miss Naomi during a 17-year shopping odyssey. We have art from uh, all continents and cultures, most of the European countries, most of the Asian countries, and certainly from Africa and the Outer Islands, from before Christ to contemporary. Um, we have uh, antiquities that were part of households that are dated BCE uh, 100 and 200 that were dug up by archaeologists in Palestine and Syria and Iraq in prior days that uh, eroticism has been part of communities for, for centuries. We start the collection in this room that has the older subject matter of art with the biblical art, which includes Adam and Eve, David, um, Bathsheba, um, Salome, and Lot and his daughters. And people ask me always, what's my favorite piece of art? And it happens to be this representation of Adam being created out of the dust of the earth. Most people do not realize that there is a, a great deal of sexuality uh, within the, uh, uh, all the uh, books of the Bible, whether it was um, uh, Abraham having a concubine or whether it was David lying with Bathsheba or whether it was Lot and his daughters, or whether it was obviously in the beginning Adam and Eve. Um, there are many sexual um, uh, activities and highlights within the uh, stories of the Bible, which again should have opened people's minds to, to sexuality instead of closed them. Sexuality is also a driving force in Greek mythology. The famous legend of Leda and the Swan, in which the god Zeus disguised himself as a swan in order to seduce a mortal, is depicted in more than 80 pieces of art at Weim. 
There are many other familiar mythological figures as well. The satyrs were more of the party animals and the more um, tender of the lovers, while the centaurs were more aggressive and carried off the women into the woods. Some may be surprised to hear a woman of age speaking so freely about things that many Americans consider taboo. In fact, it didn't always come easily to Miss Naomi. My mother took the attitude, uh, everything was just don't, not why not to, just don't. Don't let a boy touch you, uh, uh, don't kiss, don't, uh, don't do uh, anything, anything sexual of any kind, it's forbidden, it's, uh, it's bad. So I, I really came from a terribly uh, perverted and inverted <laughs> sense of being as far as sexuality. This is an example of something not looking explicitly erotic to look at, but it was erotic for its time. Uh, this is a can-can dancer by a Hungarian artist by the name of Palfried. And just the very act of a woman raising her skirts and raising her leg to show her body, uh, to show her pantaloons, to show her garters and stockings was outrageous for its time. Didn't you always want to know what a Scotsman has under his kilt? Nothing. For more than 30 years, Miss Naomi was a mother, housewife, and active volunteer in her community in New Jersey. As a hobby, she took pleasure in browsing antique shows. But then came an unusual request that would open her eyes to the world of erotica. One day I got a phone call from my oldest son saying, Mom, would you do me a favor? And I said, what do you want? He said, buy me some erotica. And I said, well, what are you talking about? A picture, a book, a statue? He said, it doesn't matter. He said, you know, I'm moving into a new apartment and, and I want some conversation pieces. So Miss Naomi began to search and soon she found a painting that she thought her son would like. He didn't think it was powerful enough and sexual enough for his purposes, so I kept it. And that was the start of my own collection. For the next dozen years, Miss Naomi's search for erotica took her all over Europe and America. She warehoused her purchases at a winter retreat in Florida. But over time, her hobby began to cause stress in her life. I wasn't feeling that great, and I went to my doctor for a checkup, and my blood pressure was high. So he said to me, what's going on in your life? Uh, are you under any stress? So I said, well, I'm doing something that my husband isn't particularly pleased with. And I'm collecting erotic art, and he's a conservative banker and doesn't think it's a proper thing for me to do. So I said, I guess I'm under stress. And he turned to me and he said, if your reason for getting up and going out is to buy erotic art, that's the healthiest, best thing you can do for yourself. Keep collecting. And that, of course, uh, uh, gave me a great feeling of satisfaction. And gradually, my blood pressure went down. <laughs> Since then, Naomi Wilzig has authored five books on collecting erotic art. She lectures at colleges, and in October 2005, she realized her goal of opening her museum in South Beach. I might be bragging, but I think our museum certainly rates among the top erotic museums of the world. And I've had many visitors who have enhanced that opinion by saying they had been to various uh, European museums and thought ours surpassed them. So uh, we're certainly on an even plane of the best, if not the best. Miss Naomi's hobby is unquestionably unconventional, but that's partly what has made it so rewarding for her. Joining me now to discuss erotic art and its place in our culture is Katherine Johnson Rare. Ms. Johnson Rare is the curator of art, artifacts, and photography at the Kinsey Institute for Research in Sex, Gender, and Reproduction. Her work includes organizing public exhibitions from the Kinsey Institute's collections and coordinating with private donors to expand the Institute's holdings. Welcome to the Daily Apple. Thank you. How do you define erotic art? Ah, that's, that's a big question. <laughs> uh, we get that a lot because people always want to know how it varies from pornography. But uh, uh, I think like pornography, erotic art is something that means something different to every person. But basically art that does involve some sexual component, but it, uh, it may just be a, a beautiful nude. There may not be any actual sexual activity at all. And so it's all in the eye of the beholder, I assume. I think so. And the Kinsey Institute collection, tell me a little bit about it. Uh, we were founded in 47 by Dr. Alfred Kinsey, who decided to collect 
objects, uh, visual data, uh, for his research collection. He was already collecting books and other printed materials. Uh, today we have a very large collection, altogether probably close to 100,000 items. Um, many, of, many of those are photographs. What role do you think the Institute's collection actually plays in our society? Well, uh, the Institute's collection specifically is, is available for research. So anybody from around the world who's doing work uh, on erotica or on uh, uh, cultural history uh, can come and use our materials for their own research. Um, but it also serves uh, a purpose in terms of acquainting other people with the prevalence of erotica around the world. Why do you think other museums and galleries don't have a lot of erotic art in them? Well, I think a lot of museums actually have erotic art, but a lot of times it's kept in the basement. Uh, oh, they don't right? always put it on display. So is that what you're <laughs> supposed to ask a curator? Can I visit the basement? And then you yeah. get all the good goods, if you will? Right. It used to be uh, the British Museum had a secret uh, uh, well, collection. Well, tell me about uh, the British Museum had a secret collection? Is they've, that... they've, they've opened it up now. But... Really? What cultural, political, and, and what kind of stigmas are there that you and other curators are on erotic art have to overcome as you show the work? Uh, that is certainly a problem uh, in terms of publishing material, advertising uh, shows. What image do you send to a newspaper that's going to run a story about your, uh, your exhibit? Uh, it's hard to know when you work with the material all the time what is going to be acceptable to the, the greater public. Uh, sometimes I don't guess correctly, but uh, uh, we want people to know what we have and we want them to come see it. We don't want to shock anyone. We're very careful with the type of images we put on our website, for sure. example. Sure. We're going to take a short break, so hold on one second. We need to take a break, but stay with us because when we come back, we'll continue our discussion of erotic art and its place in society with Katherine Johnson Rare. True or false, the Greeks were the first to start making erotic art. Do you know the answer? It's false. The first pieces of erotic art trace way back to the cave paintings of the Paleolithic period, also referred to as the Stone Age. We're back to continue our discussion on erotic art and its merits with Katherine Johnson Rare. She's the curator of art, artifacts, and photography at the Kinsey Institute. Katherine, why do you think that there is this stigma or this taboo that's attached to sexuality and erotic art? Well, I think. The, uh, the stigma and the taboo is cultural, uh, so I think sometimes it's a little more uh, accentuated in this country than in other countries. Uh, there have been erotic art museums throughout Europe for quite a while. Uh, it's a new thing in this country. Uh, the Museum of Sex opened in 2002, and as far as I know, Gosh, that was the first. Gosh, I only heard about the spy museum. There's a Museum of Sex <laughs> as well. Where is that located? Uh, it's on Fifth Avenue in, uh, in New York. <laughs> Another museum opened up in Los Angeles, but it actually failed fairly quickly. So it, it's hard to, to say, as, as Miss Naomi uh, Wilsey has said, uh, she had a hard time finding a location that wanted to have a sex museum or a, an erotic art museum uh, in their community. So it, I, I think people have a lot of ideas what it could be, and uh, sometimes those are fairly negative. But um, Why do you think um, society feels that seniors might be more averse than younger people to erotic art? I think there's a stereotype that seniors are conservative, but uh, what I find uh, at the Kinsey Institute, I do a lot of tours for visitors. We have people of all ages coming in, and I find that my favorite visitors are usually the older visitors. Uh, we have parents of, uh, of Indiana University students come to visit, but often their grandparents will come in, and they love seeing this work. They uh, usually have stories of their own to relate to us, and uh, they find it amusing. Uh, you know, a lot of erotic art is rather funny, and uh, they, they see the humor in it. We have works by Picasso and uh, uh, really? uh, Marc Chagall, and many well-known artists who you, created erotic Do you imagery. think it takes, actually, a mature mind or someone who's sort of been around the block to really appreciate this kind of art? I think it helps. Uh, I think sometimes the younger people are a little uncomfortable. Uh, they're not used to seeing uh, erotic imagery, and uh, they're not often they're they're much quieter as visitors than uh, than the older uh, visitors who come through. In terms of our society, you uh, clearly have collections of Picasso all the way to today. What do you think that these collections um, reveal? I guess about our society and the society of the past. 
Well, I think what's most startling to our visitors is the fact that erotic art has been made for such a long time. Uh, especially a younger visitor coming in, say a 21-year-old college student, tends to think, oh, all, all of these very interesting sexual acts are probably things that, that were invented in my lifetime. <laughs> They're new. Uh, what people find out when they come to see our, our uh, exhibits and see the material we have is that sexual expression has been around since humans have been around. Uh, and uh, for example, our erotic photography from the 19th century shows, shows a wide range of uh, sexual behavior that, that uh, I think most people would think of as being more recent uh, inventions. So you can learn something from history, huh? Oh, quite a lot. <laughs> um, now, do you just have erotic art in the Kinsey Institute collection, or is there also other fine art there? We certainly have many uh, pieces in our collection that probably wouldn't qualify as art. We have a um, a condom collection, for example, novelty condoms that are 50 years old. That, really? Uh, condoms are all have been around for 50 years? Interesting shapes and sizes. Oh, much longer than that. We have an 18th century condom. No kidding. What does that look from like? From England. It's quite plain. Uh, it was made out of sheep intestine. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, and because it's several centuries old, it now looks more like a very thin paper. Okay, what are, what are some other actual collections that you have there that are interesting, like the condoms? Uh, we have uh, materials related to birth control, different devices that have been used. We have uh, various very complicated devices that were used for determining the rhythm method. Uh, if you were a Catholic and you weren't allowed to, to use any other method, uh, you could use this complicated mathematical formula to figure out uh, you know, when you could have sexual relations and not become pregnant. The, uh, uh, largest part of the art collection is actually photography mm. and that varies from amateur photography somebody taking a picture of his girlfriend uh, when they were out on a picnic to uh, commercial erotica that goes back to the 1850s uh, that was actually made specifically to be sold uh, to the public how do you choose which pieces of art to put in and which not to uh, it depends on the theme of the show we right now we have a, an exhibit called sex objects that is actually three-dimensional artwork. So it's um, fine art sculpture. But then we also have some interesting things like board games, uh, playing cards, uh, some uh, uh, erotic items that are actually made to be functional, like a, a, a hair comb carved out of ivory that has a beautiful erotic scene on it. So eroticism, the definition, is not just sex or sexuality. It's, I, I hear from you it's also romance, I mean a beautiful comb oh, yes. out of ivory. What, how do you define eroticism versus erotic art? Well, I think uh, erotic art is, is an expression of eroticism. Um, an artist may want to express something about his or her own sexuality or just create a really beautiful sensual object. We had a, a juried erotic art show th earlier this year with about 40 pieces in it. And it was amazing the range of interpretations that artists had for what, what was erotic to them. One of them was a quilt that had an outline of a male nude figure on it. It was very subtle. You could probably hang it in a bank and nobody would even uh, really? think twice about it. Uh, and then we also had some very explicitly erotic or explicitly sexual photographs that were submitted. So everybody has a different idea of how to express erotic I guess uh, it's impulses. not like ju judging a barbecue uh, sauce contest. <laughs> it's a little different. Um, do you, tell me about what you feel about the research from the Kinsey Institute. Do you think that it's really helped us move forward since the research? It started in the 50s, right? Actually, uh, Alfred Kinsey began his work in 1938. Okay. Uh, but the books that really made uh, the, uh, uh, the study of sexuality uh, come to the fore were published in 48 and 53, uh, became known as the Kinsey Reports. Uh, the, uh, the research we do today is very different from what Alfred Kinsey was doing because he was trying to find out what people did sexually. He was interested in sexual behavior. Mm -hmm. Uh, today, we have a staff of psychologists who are looking at, at why people behave the way they do. So we're still asking a lot of questions, still trying to understand human behavior and, and, and human beings, but uh, taking a little different uh, approach to it. How do you think that Naomi and her age, being in her 70s, do you think that that's affected um, positively the way seniors might look at, at um, erotic art? I hope so. I'm glad you're doing a story on, on her uh, because I think it's good for people to realize that, that becoming older does not mean that you uh, 
you somehow turn off as a sexual being. Uh, and I, I spoke to uh, Miss Naomi recently, and she said that many people who come to her museum will actually come by her office and thank her really? for uh, putting this material on display and, and bringing it to the fore. Uh, that's something that Alfred Kinsey did as well by writing his books. Uh, just made sexuality something that people could talk about. And that was before, available. It wasn't. Sure. Thanks so much for being here. You're welcome.